Which should you buy first, a 3D printer or a CNC machine? To help answer that question, I'd like to make the same parts on each type of machine and compare how much time and money it takes to do it. So if you're on the fence about which to buy, we're gonna find out exactly what to expect from each machine so you can pick the one that's right for you. So stick around. This is the Crater, a modular and magnetic gaming token tray system that I designed and tested a few videos ago, and it's free to download for anyone who wants to 3D print it. I'll have a link down there below. It was originally designed to be strictly 3D printed, but it can also be CNC machined with a few small tweaks to the model. The 3D printed craters actually work really well, and I've been using them quite a bit on nearly every game on game night. My only complaint really is the looks. And I tried to address this a bit by adding these raised panel options, but I'm a woodworker and to me there is nothing better than using real solid wood with each piece being slightly different and that beautiful natural grain showing through. And of course that feeling of a quality piece when we're done. So the question in my mind is how much does it actually cost to get something like this but made from wood? We're gonna work out a production cost for each and for 3D printing normally I would fill up the build plate completely and that's the most efficient for time and also cost effective for energy. Some printers are a bit smaller so it's gonna range but I can load four on at a time on the Prusa Mark 4S. For the CNC, it's actually a little bit different. It does make the most sense to fill up the machine, but that's with smaller blanks. I have a piece of walnut. I've already flattened one face and that's all that I need to flatten. And that way it sits nice on my CNC table. If I didn't do that to start with, I could have something like this. I'd load up most of the table, which reduces tool changes and also reduces overall movement reducing the cost quite a bit too. Most CNC machines are larger than 3D printers and in my case, I could run about 30 pieces on it at a time. It's a four foot by four foot CNC machine. A smaller machine will save some money and save some space in your shop and I wouldn't actually mind having a mini version of my machine just for smaller projects like this. The design process for this took me at least an entire day and that's gonna be about the same whether it's for CNC machined or 3D printed and it usually doesn't happen all at once. It's more of an evolution over time. And the reason it takes so long is because it usually takes time to figure out the best way to make it function and then also to be able to be 3D printed easily by anyone on any machine in any material. For those small adjustments for the CNC machining, I needed to adjust the bottom groove so a round nose cutter could come in and the slots for the magnets need to be adjusted a little bit wider because we have a radius to match the router bit that we'll be using. I also removed the name and my logo from the bottom because I don't have any great way to machine that on the CNC at the moment. We're gonna be using a completely different method to do that later on. For the programming, technically a 3D printer is still a CNC machine of sorts, but we provide instruction for a 3D printer through a slicer instead. And for the CNC, we do it from a software like Fusion where we can create the machining tool paths that we'd like. For the slicing, it's actually pretty simple. This model is very forgiving since it was designed to be 3D printed. So it only takes a few minutes to slice it, send it to the printer. And once we do it once, that is it. We can just reuse that file over and over again. For the CNC machining, it usually takes quite a bit longer to program. And that's mainly because there's a lot of flexibility in what we can do and how we do it. There's also the little issue of needing to access both the top and the bottom of these parts. It can take several hours to create CNC programming from scratch for all of the machining needed, including the fixturing needed to hold the parts in place on the CNC after we flip it over. Initially, 3D printing can have a pretty big advantage over CNC machining from a programming standpoint, and it can be more or less depending on the software that you're using. And with most programming softwares, it is actually possible to save the toolpath settings as a template to reuse them later on to save a bit of time. Since I'm already using Fusion to create all my designs, it makes the most sense for me to use Fusion for the programming as well, which keeps it nice and simple and all contained in one place. So overall, the time required initially for CNC machining is several hours compared to just a few minutes for the 3D printer. Luckily, no matter which process we're using, once it's done, we can use it over and over again. For 3D printing, we're gonna be using spools of filament, and in this case, I wanted to use the best, most consistent stuff out there, and I think that is Prusament, which at the moment is about $30 US for a kilogram. I like to print mine pretty heavy and give them a bit of weight and also make them a bit stronger too to deal with a drop. Each is about 60 grams, so we can get about 16 out of a single spool, 
with tax and shipping, that brings the price to around $2.80 per piece just for the materials. For CNC machining, I'm using walnut to start out with, but most hardwoods will work well for this. The more dense the wood, the better. The more figured the wood, the better, I think in this particular case, but then the higher the cost as well. We can remove the surfacing bit and replace it with this eighth of an inch bit. At the moment, walnut is actually one of the most expensive hardwoods for some reason. It is about $10 US per board foot. There's gas to pick it up and tax and some time in there as well. And we're able to get eight pieces per board foot, bringing us to about $1.50 per piece, but then there's those extra costs. So it's about $1.88 or $1.90 per piece for the material. We also need some tooling for the machining of that wood. I have four basic tools, which I like to use for most of my projects, and I already have them, but that cost will be higher because of the tooling. We also need sandpaper. We also need to apply some kind of finish to protect them and bring out that rich color of the wood. Again, bringing the cost a little bit higher. We also need some material for the fixture and some nails too, just to hold it in place. That adds a bit more cost, but sometimes people have some of that stuff already. For the power consumption, this is something I don't hear a lot of people talking about. I've run the Mark IV-S printer with a power meter on it for a full print, and it comes out to 1.348 kilowatt hours. That adds four cents to the cost of each piece, which isn't really a lot. With my CNC, I need to run the shop back as well as the CNC, but the overall machining time is quite a bit less. The CNC operation for two of them is 60 minutes or so total. And the shop vac by far is the biggest consumer at one kilowatt over that time, which is not very good, but it is a 27 year old shop vac. From a production standpoint, this is where 3D printing really shines. And aside from making sure that there is enough filament, I like to add glue stick to the build plate for each print and that's really it. We can send it to the printer and then a few hours later we can take it off or take them off as nearly finished parts. Only the magnets will need to be added at the end. The glue stick should be washed off of the final part as well. And the overall investment of time is extremely small. That's really only a few minutes per part. And even this process could be improved by swapping build plates as soon as the prints are finished to retain some heat. For CNC machining, the initial setup and testing take quite a bit longer. And after that stage, the setup isn't actually too bad. You can see that it was not continuous, so they won't sit on top of each other properly. So what I've done is I've suppressed these housings and that way it sees that as a complete groove and the ball nose cutter should stay down in that groove. And I've also done one more pass just as a finished pass, but going in the opposite direction too. Now, some people like to use air to blow around the dust. That just launches it all into the air and into your environment around the shop, making it a lot harder to clean up. So I think it's better just to use the vacuum if you can. Also, in my case, I need to manually do all of my tool changes, which doesn't take much time, but it does mean that I can't just leave it to do the job and focus on other things. There is also the issue of noise. A CNC machine is way louder than a 3D printer. In some cases, you have to wear hearing protection all the time when you're near it. So if it's running for hours and hours, there are certain things that you can't really do in the shop during that time, like talk on the phone, or in my case, record any audio. If I were to buy a machine right now, I would probably buy a little bit smaller machine, but have a tool changer on there. I think that would save a ton of time. These parts need to be machined on one face and then they can be flipped over and machined again. Now machining all of this at once really isn't possible even with the best and most expensive equipment. Once the parts are finished, they can be lightly sanded. I have the Bamboo H2D laser. It's gonna do a really good job here so we can load all of them on at one time and finish them all in one big batch using the batch processing feature. There are some other ways to do this like using a branding iron, but the laser is pretty quick and produces a nice clean high-end result and it's also very consistent. We also need to lightly sand them after that's done, clean them and apply a finish. And since we need to finish both sides of this, it's a good idea to apply a spray finish to one side at a time and then do them in batches. Ideally two coats on the top and two coats on the bottom with a few hours to dry in between coats. Unfortunately, I don't have any spray equipment at the moment, so I'm just gonna be applying by hand. I have a little trick with these though. Since we have these magnets, I've made up a couple of little jigs which I can hold on to. That allows me to apply to the top and the bottoms all at once, saving a little bit more time. 
Ideally, there'd be no sanding needed after applying the finish if it's done correctly. So for a production setup, I would definitely set up a spray booth, use lacquer, or another option could be just to use a natural type finish. With dedicated tooling and a better spindle and automatic tool changer for this machine, I could save quite a bit of time and produce better results. I already have some woodworking equipment in my shop, which makes this type of work a little bit more possible. And there is more room for problems since we're working with a natural material. The grain is weak in some areas and can actually break out. So I did change the process a little bit to pocket out for the magnets last, and that helps to prevent this but I also can rotate the part in relationship to the grain that helps to prevent this problem a little bit too. I put it at about 30 minutes per piece of my time with my current equipment. I don't have the perfect production setup for this, so it's pretty easy to improve and making bigger batches helps to save time too, so I could probably get it down to maybe about 15 minutes per piece. A bigger portion of the cost with CNC machining is gonna be the labor, so it makes sense to go with the most unique and also expensive materials, which makes the finished parts a bit more valuable so that people will be more willing to pay for them. Curly maple, bird's eye maple, or burls even would be great options, or even an exotic type wood. This one is called Blackheart. It is one of the hardest woods on the planet. I also kind of like the idea of trying something like cactus juice to pre-treat the wood prior to machining and that might help to produce better results during the machining process and it also might help during the finishing process as well. To me, there really isn't any great substitute for the look and feel of something made from solid wood and over time with use they tend to look even better. The 3D printed versions, they look pretty good too. It might be my bias speaking though, so let me know what you prefer. I machined this set from Walnut, Cherry, and White Oak to see how each turned out, and the Walnut looks the best to me, and also machined really well. So for the 3D printed craters, four per plate, we have uh, energy cost is pretty low at four cents. Filament is 288, so that ended up being the biggest proportion of this. That's an area we could probably save some money in as well. The magnets I'm getting from AliExpress, $1.20, not too expensive. The labor, also not too expensive, 20 minutes for a total of four pieces. That brings us to 250 per piece. We have some maintenance fees as well. That just accounts for some wear and tear on the machine. Also tooling like nozzles and things like that, 13 cents per piece. And we have other because there's always something else. Now that comes to a total of around $7 per unit. The cost for the machine itself to buy new is $729 US right now. That's for the kit. You'd have to assemble it yourself. And we have shipping and tax on top of that. For a wood shop like mine, it's best to have a printer in an enclosure to keep the dust off of the machines too. So we're nearing $1,000 US for everything. For CNC machining, the cost per piece here is based on me making two pieces at a time. Now technically with my machine, I could fill up the table with blanks and make 30 at a time and let each machining step run for several hours. Now that would save me quite a bit of time and reduce the cost. I would just need to make sure to keep an eye on the tooling to make sure that it's sharp. Based off of two pieces per machining cycle for solid wood parts, what surprised me the most was the cost for the vacuum compared to the cost for everything else, but really the cost for energy are still quite low. The lumber cost also surprised me. Even using walnut, one of the most expensive materials that I could choose, it still actually is only a tiny percentage of the total cost. So we can definitely drop that price down if we were to use a different material, something like maple or cherry, for example. Magnets are the same cost. The upfront cost for the finish is kind of expensive, but a little bit goes a long way. So it only comes out to about 23 cents per piece. The labor though, by far the biggest percentage here. And there's an easy way to drop this down and that's by getting an automatic tool changer for my CNC. But in the current setup, $15 or so per piece. And rather than moving it to the laser, I should probably machine as much as possible at the CNC. I have some maintenance in here as well, just like we had for the 3D printer. And I have something called broken and damaged parts. And that is there to account for what happens when we expose every side of that solid wood or that finished part. Sometimes we also expose defects and they can either require repair or that means that part isn't necessarily usable. And of course we have other coming out to 1956. So substantially higher than the 3D printed version. And of course, if you're doing this for yourself and the majority of the cost is in the labor, and you can just ignore the labor because you're doing it for fun, 
then these are actually quite cheap in comparison to 3D printed. Now here's the real kicker. The cost of this machine new in US dollars is about 5,000 and there will be some upfront tooling costs as well. The cost of the router also, and then there's dust collection too to think about. And sometimes people like to use an air compressor too. So we have a bunch of different costs there we wanna add in. We're gonna be closer to 5,500 or so US. A smaller machine for this type of work is actually probably a better idea, and that would be about half of the upfront cost, around $2,500 or so. A bigger router is really only needed for machining large parts and for sheet stock. This is just one example, and each part will be different, but I think it does a pretty good job of showing why 3D printing is so popular. 3D printers are getting bigger and better all the time. So if you're on the fence between a CNC and a 3D printer, and a 3D printer can give you all the parts that you need in the materials that work for your projects, it seems like that is a better first purchase over the CNC machine. It might not be able to do everything, but that's true for just about any machine as well. There is a lot you can do with a 3D printer that you can't do with a CNC machine, but there are also a few things that you can't do with a 3D printer that you can do with the CNC as well, like machining wood and machining aluminum also. It's ideal to have both options to choose from and to use each machine for what they do the best. 3D printers for those detailed and intricate parts and CNC machines for quick processing of flat stock, which is strong and cheaper to allow us to make even bigger projects. So I'm not saying it isn't possible to get something that's made from wood to be competitive with something that's 3D printed, but I think it just takes a lot longer. You can see a good example here is the steps that I've had to go through to refine that CNC process so that I got a pretty good result. Here's one where we had parallel lines or parallel machining and it ended up with what you might consider to be defects or something that requires a lot of sanding. This one here, I changed it, but it gave me this hexagonal shape and that ended up giving me these lines in here that I didn't like. So to get the best results, I used a complete spiral. I actually did this in two steps both the inner to get that circular spiral and then the outer gave me the hexagonal shape, the fixture to hold it down to the table. And I also have one for the lathe as well. For the 3D printed version, you don't really need to do any of that stuff. You literally just press print. Quite a bit of savings when it comes to the labor to do 3D printed versions, but maybe you can judge which ones you prefer or which ones you might consider paying for if you were to buy something like this. But to me, the wood one looks about 100 times better than the 3D printed version. But the 3D printed version, it doesn't look too bad either. But now I think I need to make an entire set that actually matches and I'm not quite sure which material to use for that. Hopefully this video has shed some light on it for you and thanks to my patrons for helping to make these videos possible and thank you for watching. I hope to see you on the next one.